Can someone tell me which bitch just filmed a whole video and forgot to press record? Yeah, you guessed right. It was me. It was me. Fuming. Demon! I am fucking fuming! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new. I did actually have a different video planned for today, but that is going to come either later on in the week or next mental health Monday. It's next Monday. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I thought instead of doing that video, which is all about trigger warnings, by the way, so if you have any views or opinions on trigger warnings, um, where they should be used, are they useful, are they helpful, do you ignore them, then follow me on Instagram, um, my Instagram will be linked down below, it's Marie underscore Seneschal, and you can send me a direct message, I will read them, and it can be featured in the video, because I'm going to be talking about some people's responses, so, with all that said, let's get on in today's video. So I thought I would start a little mini series, some may say, of a what happens when. So I get so many DMs on and um, I get so many DMs and questions about what happens when you do this, what happens when this happens, what happens when this happens. And I thought I could just do a collective little mini series about what happens when X, Y, and Z happens. So, for example, today's video is going to be what happens when you go to A&E for self-harm. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about self-harm in this video, um, and I'm just going to be talking about my own experiences. So if you also have your own experience, please leave them in the comments. I love it when people help each other out in the comments and comment on each other's stuff and just, you know, mingle. You know, we're like networking. Our little fam is mingling. So I get so many DMs through asking me what happens when you go to self-harm, when you go to A&E for self-harm even. And I think this is a question people ask because of fear. Um, a lot of people are scared to go to A&E um, and I understand that. I've been a handful of times to A&E for self-harm and I've had different experiences every time so I just want to make that clear that this is all my own experiences. I'm not trying to encourage this behaviour, all I'm saying is that this behaviour happens, we need to acknowledge that but we also need to make sure that you are safe and clean and healthy after this has happened because if you get an infection or anything worse then that will just make your life so much harder so please don't come at me for talking about this subject. I think it needs to be talked about. And if it helps at least one person, then my drug, I'm done. I think the question a lot of people ask to themselves is, is my self-harm severe enough to go to A&E? Now, this is always something that, this topic I wanna kind of touch on. Uh, please do not ask other people online whether your self-harm is severe enough to go to any I just think that that is just not the way to go about it you need to talk to someone in real life you need to either deal with it by yourself if you're old enough or if you're too if you're young enough and say can't get to any by yourself um, then you need to tell your parents or the person who is not in charge of you your guardian um, so tell someone in real life, tell your guardian, tell your sister, tell your brother, but don't... I tell you what, police and my videos just go hand in hand, don't they? I don't think that's the police actually, I think that's an ambulance. No, I think that's... Yeah. Oh, it is the police. Oh, they've got three vans out. I've had experiences in the past where people have sent me pictures of their self-harm and asked me if it's severe enough and I know this comes with um, not wrong intentions, it's just not the right way to go about things and living your life virtually in like, say if you're in the mental health community, um, you've got to be really careful what you post and 
just be really careful with stuff like that don't post it on social media you need to sort it out in the real world like in real life so every time i've gone to self-harm for a and i keep saying that when i went the first time um i actually had a, a quite I don't know whether other people have had this and please let me know if you did but the first time I went they really um, asked me questions like like for about an hour and a half I, I don't know whether they'll be build in like a profile of me or something but basically dealt with the self-harm which wasn't which was classed as superficial which is something I'm going to go on to later in the video um, but that was dealt with I got you know bandaged up whatever but they they then uh, sorry my camera just cut out um so what was i saying yeah they asked me loads of questions from my name age job what i do like that basic thing but then they asked a lot about my past like they did ask if i'd had like past traumas they they really they really covered all bases 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 bases, bases that's just gone weird in my head now. They really covered all the ground for building up almost a profile of me. Um, so that happened the first time I went, but basically what happens when you go to A&E, you, I'm just gonna talk you through what, what you do. So you turn up at A&E, you go to the front desk, you say your name and date of birth, and then say that you're there for self-harm. They'll get you to wait in the waiting room. And then after that, you will be triaged, so you will, go in and be assessed by a nurse or a doctor, normally it's a nurse, who will look at your self-harm and then either put you in a bed or put you in a chair or like put you in a room that's not in the waiting room. I've had it where I've been put in a bed, I've had it where I've just been put in like the mental health room. If anyone knows that room, oh my god, Ugh. it's like got squashy uh, chairs and the door is always open uh, 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 the memories I don't like them I don't like that no yeah so I got I've been put in there a few times and I hate it because it's always directly opposite the fucking clock so I just sit there and I stare at the clock for hours and then you'll be seen by a doctor um, depending on how they are going to treat your self-harm I've only been once and got sutras um, the times before I've just had steri strips so they will just obviously look at the self-harm and decide how to treat it if if you need sutras then they normally give you a injection to numb it numb, numb the pain of the wound and then they will stitch you up then they will get you to see the mental health team now they will ask you so you'll probably be there for like i don't know i don't know what it's like in other countries I, um in the NA, in the uk it's normally like i would say the whole thing takes about six to eight hours maybe maybe six hours i don't know um just from waiting to leaving um but you will see the mental health team they will come they will ask you they will assess you to see whether you are medically fit to go home um this is where they might have to get in touch with uh, parents if you are younger um, if not then they will ask you how you've been and I always say just be as honest as you can with them they're not there to judge you they're not they're not gonna choose a situation that's not right for you they're not they're not mean people every time I've been the people have been lovely they've either been um, a mental health liaison uh, a mental health nurse a doctor a psychiatrist I've even had so it really just depends on who you see but everyone I've had um, was absolutely lovely and didn't treat me badly for didn't treat me badly or really invalidate me for going to hospital for self-harm I know a lot of people feel like they are going to be judged or um, that they are worried about it not needing me as med it not needing medical attention so like say if you went and then they said you don't need medical attention I don't think that's a bad thing because you will still see the mental health team afterwards so they can get you in touch with crisis they can get in touch with your GP they can um, set in place they can change your medication they can really put steps in place for you so don't 
feel embarrassed to go if you're uncertain of going go like that's the best thing to get it looked at to make sure it's clean to make sure that you take proper care of it because even though I, I would say please try everything you can not to self-harm and I will link my distractions videos and other people's distraction videos down below but when it happens it needs to make sure that it is cleaned after um, and I really stand by that I just think I, I get really worried that people are gonna get infections and and things like that and I know I know when you're in that type of place you don't really care about yourself and you don't really care whether you get an infection or not but trust me I've had an infection it's not very nice um, and people can develop even worse things from not going to see a professional about it and trying to deal with it by themselves um, so yeah like I said earlier the triage team that I see not I see no I see every time you know every time I go every week no I'm joking that was a joke the triage team that I'd seen when I'd went when I'd went when I'd went when I went again this is just my experience I'm not saying this is the universal approach to dealing with self-harm um, and please comment your experiences down below but when I went uh, they did often say um, like severe or superficial now I know I felt invalidated when they classed my self-harm as superficial and I know this is really just a, a very weird and odd perception to have but I see the competition in mental illness I will do a video about competition um, I think I've done one actually can't really remember I think I have done one if I have I'll leave it in the i card above but yeah they they said oh this is superficial self-harm all I'm gonna say is maybe be prepared for them to give it a class give it a class almost and um, it's not for them to try and invalidate you I really don't think it is it's literally just the way doctors are able to communicate and even it's not even severity it's it's how how do we treat this so if it's superficial then we treat it one way and if it's not superficial we treat it another way so it's literally doesn't it doesn't mean anything about your mental well-being just because someone may have gone and got stitches and you've got steri strips doesn't mean the mental health team are going to treat you any differently and i really want you to know that because i've had times i got admitted to my i got admitted to my first admission from literally going to see um going to a and e and because I I self-harm on my left arm, I started self-harming on my right arm, which I'd never done before, and it was only superficial. However, I ended up having an admission after that, whereas I've also had times where, like the time that I did go for stitches, um, I didn't go to hospital afterwards. It was just, you know, I went home and yeah, that's, that's kind of what it was. Um, you can also bring people in with you before Pip's been with me, before my dad's been um, and my mum's been as well uh, so that they can comfort you so you don't have to go alone and I think it's really important just to round this video off to remember to tell, to be honest with yourself whether you need medical attention or not and if you are unsure then go anyway if you have no one to ask but if you have people around you to ask, please ask them for their, you know, help and support during this time because you need help and support. You don't, you can't rely on people online. When people come to me and say, I've done this, this and this, it, it leaves people online really worried and it's it's hard. It, it They are literally useless in the situation. They may be able to support you through words, but can they physically do anything? No, like every time I've just had to say, please go to a &E, please ring 111. That was another thing, you can ring 111, then ask them, see if it needs medical attention. They may be able to ask you questions. They may be able to even get you a doctor's appointment. So yeah, that is basically my experience about what happens to an Oh! So to round this video off, that is basically my experience when going to self 
I keep saying it. It's going to A and E for self harm. Um, so if you want some more, what happens when? I'm gonna call it what happens when because you know it's kind of quirky. It's kind of cool. What happens when this happens? What happens when this happens? What happens when? And uh, obviously I can only do ones that I've had experience in. If you don't find myself blabbering on about my experiences then please let me know because i will stop doing videos like that and try and do different videos instead but yeah i am gonna leave you all here i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something remember to always put your health first remember to always look try and look after yourself to the best you can things are only going to start to get better in your life once you start to be kinder to yourself and if you don't recognise that, things won't change and you will just continue going downhill. So if you are recognising that you are self-harming more or the self-harm is changing in some way, like from how you initially started, then please get in contact with your doctor, go to A&E or tell someone who can make a difference in your life and help you address this, the problem. So yeah. Out of breath now. So I'm gonna love you and leave you. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see my political views, you know, my uh, inner thoughts and dramatic outlooks on life. Not really, I'm not that interested. But yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Stay safe, please. Especially if you're watching this video. You, if you're watching this video, please stay safe. Even if you make it through the night. I'm looking at you. You, 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 you clicking on this video. I'm looking at you. I see you. Stay safe, please. <laughs> Marie Seneschal is asking you to stay safe. Therefore, I will stay safe. Um, I'm making a joke out of it, but please, honestly, stay safe. Um, and I will see you in my next video.